I, it, it, it's incredibly thrilling to be in a room which is full of people that have deliberately spent their Saturday to come and see something different, you know, to, to, um, to be amazed. And amazing is powerful, right? In fact, it, it's like pressurizing on me right now, if that's why you're here. But I feel it's, um, it's a powerful thing. And I do amazement. It's my business. Right? It's, uh, I, I'm kind of a, a strange mix of uh, a sort of science and uh, magic that I sort of bring onto a stage. And mostly that means I use what I learned in my degree. I actually, have, I actually have a degree, it's in physics. And I mix it with what I stole from some magicians that were willing to tell me some secrets. And those two things combined, I use I to sort of amaze people. And I, I do it for a very particular purpose, because I think it's when you amaze somebody that they really get something. Do you know what I mean? I, I think TEDx is this incredible repository of ideas. And you go and see something, and when it amazes you, it, it sort of resonates with you, and you remember it, and you don't forget. I was first taught magic, uh, it was about seven years ago, uh, so not that long. And a friend of mine gave me a pack of cards. And in fact, I actually have a pack of those cards right here. I was actually living in China at the time. And um, for some reason, they have a picture, no one here's going to be able to see this, but they have a picture of a, what appears to be uh, Winston Churchill with a big cigar and a huge earring on the side. I've never really been able to figure this out. Um, but I got into collecting cards, so I actually collected a few of them. Um, these ones here, these are from Sicily. And one of the things I find really fascinating about these, when you open them up, they actually have suits we don't recognize. So they have uh, swords and clubs, uh, coins, and some chalices, some cups that are in here somewhere as well. And actually, they come from, um, some people here might be recognizing this, they come from tarot cards. So tarot cards that you see around in occult shops actually use these suits. Tarot cards are just playing cards. But they came from Italy or from France, actually, as well. These same suits are used there. But the actual... The, the cards that I prize the most are in here. This is the original packaging I got them in. It's bubble wrap. <laughs> I got them when I was in Iran. I have a fascination with other cultures, and so I love to travel. I think most people here do, right? You're a TED audience, which probably means that you know, you're, you're open to expanding your mind. And uh, I was uh, in a town in Iran, and I wanted to go buy some cards, because I'd, I'd been on a bit of a journey, and I was picking these up everywhere. And there's a toy shop next to the hostel that I was staying in. So I thought, great, I'll, I'll go down there. And I went in the door, and it was you know, dark and kind of gloomy and spooky for a toy shop. And I spoke to the guy at the counter, and I tried to communicate that I wanted some cards. And he spoke reasonable English, and I said, I'd like some playing cards. And he looks at me, and very sternly walks around me. And I kid you not, he locks the door. <laughs> so I wonder what I've done, right? I wonder, what, what have I said? And he goes back around to the counter, and on the counter, there's a, like, you know, a glass top to it, and underneath there's the, like, whoopee cushions and you know, smelly fart noise things. Uh, all the kind of stuff you'd expect to find in a toy shop. And he, he takes this thing away, and it's a false drawer. It's not real. And underneath, there are all these packs of cards laid out. And it turns out that actually it's illegal to buy or have a pack of cards in Iran. And so this is an underground network. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I was amazed. I was amazed because I just didn't expect that. And I think that's the value of amazement. I've not forgotten that. Right? I've forgotten many things about that trip, mostly because of the amount of drinking that I was doing. But I, I always remember that. And I'll always keep these for that memory that, that something could happen to me that I just wouldn't expect. I think... Uh, I think magic is a big part of that. Right? Magic is about giving you experiences that you don't expect and surprise you. Um, and I would love to talk to you about uh, magic, and I'd love to talk to you about sort of how it works and, and why we are tricked sometimes. But the truth is, I'm not a very good magician. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm actually a pretty awful magician. There's not very many tricks I actually have. And um, none of them I think would be particularly interesting to you, because magic is cheap. Yeah, I'm probably the only magician out there that doesn't like magic. Because I think what we give you is not really amazement. We give you a shock. Right? We show you something, and you think, ah, oh, this isn't real. How can it be happening? And it sticks with you for that minute. And then once you've puzzled it out, it goes away. It's not really a mystery, right? Because the more you know about it, the less interesting it becomes. If I tell you how a trick works, you're just going to be disappointed. Most of them are incredibly mundane. 
So it takes something slightly more interesting than that to really trick you. So magicians kind of have this thing where they, they have this big false persona because you don't want to be found out. And, and actually, the methods that they use themselves become quite interesting. It's the way we get fooled that I think is interesting. And when you learn to be a magician, if any of you ever have or, or do, you start to get fascinated in the way we're fooled by things. And you end up wanting to tell people. But you can't reveal the secrets, so you sort of end up being very preachy. And many magicians fall into this category. They are, you can be essentially become a skeptic, right? become skeptical of everything. So you get many magicians that are debunkers, and they will go over you know, homeopathists or faith healers or people that use crystals for uh, whatever purposes they do, and they will look to try and argue against them. And have you ever had that experience when you argue with somebody, and you have completely the opposite point of view? And you, you come into that argument, you think, you know what, I've got the perfect logical explanation for this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you think, oh, as, soon as, I, as soon as I lay down this argument, they are just going to fall apart, and they're going to apologize, and they'll tell me I was right all along. Yeah, and you do it, and then they just don't even, they don't even take it in. They don't even hear you. They just assume you're wrong, or that they just ignore the argument. This happened to me um, not very long ago. I was um, uh, sitting with a friend at home, and he, uh, he was suffering from hair loss, and he's taking every single treatment available to do something about that, including a box. It was a, a black plastic box like this that he'd bought. And the idea was that you, you plug in a couple of wires to it, and they look like the kind of school wires. You know the black and red ones with uh, clips on the end? I forget what they're called. They're uh, crocodile clips. And you stick them on to your ears. <laughs> <laughs> and you... you <laughs> I'm over making this up. So you, you, you turn it on, and there's a little red light that comes boop, 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 on the top. And uh, the idea is that a current flows over your head right between the two ears. As it flows over your head, it stimulates the hair follicles, and it causes it to grow more hair. And there's, there's some sort of sense to this, right? But clearly, clearly it's not going to work. So I sat with him talking about this, trying to explain that, of course, you know, an electric current going through your head is, is, not, really, is not really liable to actually give you your hair back. And then I thought, I've got the perfect argument. So I went and I fetched a screwdriver. And I opened the box up. And I thought, this is, I've got this made. Let's take a bit of a risk, because if I opened it up and there were sort of fairies flying around inside there, I, I was going to have to take something back. right? But I opened it up, and I, I looked inside. And a few things fell out as we opened it. And what fell out was a couple of wires, a very small piece of circuitry, a light, and a 9-volt battery. And that was it. And I looked at the box, he looked at the box, I looked at him, he looked at me, and he went, so actually I could just use the 9 volt battery. <laughs> and the thing is, it's a very famous quote, and I, I, I can, no amount of Googling would help me find out who this was from. And it, it sticks with me a lot, is that you can't argue something out of somebody if it wasn't put there by argument in the first place. You ever thought about that? It means that no matter how much you want to argue with someone, if they don't believe it because of some logical argument, you know, if they have an internal reason to think that it's true, no amount of logic is going to do anything about that because they didn't think about it from logic in the first place. So then what do we do? Do we just give up? You know, I said I, I come from a magic background, so I have this kind of, uh, this, this sort of desire to fight you know, people that I think are basically fraudsters. And yet, am I just supposed to stop bothering to tell people about this? No, I think there's actually a different angle to take. Uh, so I actually work in schools a lot, and, and uh, you're probably pitying me, some of you at the moment, but those of you that are teachers or work in schools, well, no, it's a really rewarding experience because talking to kids actually means that they're quite open-minded when they listen to you, and they're very easy to amaze. So sometimes I take tricks, but sometimes I try and take things that are, for want of a better word, real. And thinking about what happened with my friend in the 94 battery, I came up with an idea, and I want to show you something that amazed me. I actually need some volunteers to help me out with this, so I'm just going to pop into the audience and see if I can grab a couple of people. We're going to look at people that are somewhere near the front row. Um, everyone's looking away from me at the moment. <laughs> it's, inc it's incredibly embarrassing. Come over here. Would you mind coming up and giving me a hand at the front? Brilliant, would you? And in fact, actually, do you know this person sitting next to you as well? Yeah. Would, you give, would you come up for me as well? Thank you. And then I think I could do with about three people all together, um, so let's find it. Would you know them as well? No, you're just desperately trying to disassociate yourself from them. <laughs> would you mind coming up as well? We'll take all three of you, I think. And because they volunteered or have been pushed into doing this, would you give them a nice round of applause as well? <laughs> Guys, why don't you come up onto the stage for me? Brilliant. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what are your names, guys? I'm Aaron. Aaron, nice to meet you. I'm Neil. Fliss. Fliss, nice to meet you. I'm Neil. James. James, nice to meet you. I'm Neil. So, Aaron, um, 
we're going to start you out as like the sort of the main guy in this, okay? And we're, uh, this was something that I discovered completely by accident, but I think it's amazing. And so I wanted to share it all with you. Um, so Aaron, you're going to come and stand over here for me. And this little thing down here is going to be yours, okay? It's, uh, for those of you that can't see, it's a small guitar amplifier. And I, uh, I'm one of those people that eternally want to be able to play the guitar. So I have a couple of these lying around. I don't actually own an electric guitar. <laughs> But one day, uh, Aaron, you stay back with me for a minute. And um, James. James, would you, uh, you, you're for this position here, okay? And I've got another one of these for you over here. Okay, and this is for you. And we're just gonna put it down by your feet. And f Flim, is it? Fliss. Fliss. Fliss, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be the central part of this, this demonstration. So I need you just to stand here. And then just wait for me, okay? It's a little bit embarrassing being stood in the middle, but just try and pretend that everyone's not looking at you, okay? <laughs> Good. Um, James, we'll, we'll, start with, uh, we'll start with you over here. Um, what I was doing was I had a couple of speakers at home, and I noticed something really weird happen as I started plugging a few things in. Right? So I'm going I'm to show it to you. Um, I don't know if everyone at the back can hear this. It's kind of quiet, mostly because it's just coming off my phone. It's actually, um, actually royalty-free music, so I was trying to be kind of careful. Uh, so I'm just going to plug this into my speaker down here. And guitar amplifiers are meant to make things a lot louder, right? So when it goes in, hey. Now, let's pop that down there. The whole point was I had one set up over here, and I had one set up over here, over here as well. So Aaron was, had this one over here, and I just had this one lying loose, right, in the room. Now, over this side, James, I was trying to pick things up to plug them in. So actually, <laughs> I pulled over a cable, and this cable was meant to be able to plug it into a set of headphones. So you should pull this one in, and when I do it, you'll notice that the music's going to stop. Okay, there's no big surprise that it stopped, because now, obviously, we've just taken the signal and we've put it onto here. James, would you hold on to that for me a second? Actually, would you just um, hold on to it like this, just putting your finger on the top as well? Because cool, that's what I ended up did. I was you know, moving cables around and things. And um, over this side, uh, Aaron, can you just take one step to your left for me? I've just um, put up one of these. Can you touch the top of that one as well? Yeah, brilliant. I've actually felt if you're going to touch it, the best thing you can do for me is just put your finger like this. Yeah, like you're pointing at someone over there. Brilliant, cool. And don't touch it with these hands. So keep yeah. those ones nice. Because you got the right idea, cool. Because I just want to get the connection exactly the way that I had it. Now, um, at this point, you guys look kind of silly. I'm not going to deny it. But this is where the amazing thing happened. Uh, first, can you just come and step into the middle of these guys and stretch your hands out? And guys, just put your finger on the top. Just connect hands up. That is actually passing between them. Please take your hands down, collect them together. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? <laughs> it's just the most incredible thing. This is the kind of stuff that I love to take out and show people because it's not just a puzzle. The more you understand this, the more amazing it becomes. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so I was, I was in a school uh, in Northern Ireland a couple of months ago. I travel over there quite a lot. I'm asked to go back and I go into schools. And I speak about what science is and about why it's so interesting. Right? And a big part of my belief is to go in there and amaze people. Because if I amaze them, I will bring them on board with me. It goes back to the thing about not being able to get an argument out of someone's head. You know, if you want to convince someone to love something you love, then I think the right way of doing it is not to argue with them about it. It's to show them it, right? Show them the way that you enjoy it. I mean, I think that's common sense. And I was in the school and I finished and... Um, as always happens, every time I give uh, a talk in a school, uh, people will come up to me at the end. I, know, I always know it's going to happen. It, it's, it's regular as clockwork. And sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. In this case, it was one. And this girl comes over, and she says to me, I really like what you did. She said, I love what you talked about, but don't you find it scary? And her teacher was with me. And she said, oh, why do you find it scary? What do you mean? Because yeah, it was sounded silly. She said, but... I really want to. I really want to like know more about this, but I'm afraid I won't believe in God anymore. Now, what do you do? What, are, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say at that point when someone's asking me that? Because I don't feel it's my place to step in there and and say something. 
And to me, this is very sensitive because actually the same decision happened to me about 10 years ago. I was uh, a very, very strong Christian. I used to be one of those people that would go out and uh, proselytize to people. I mean, when I was 13, I actually bought a set of New Testaments and tried to put them under the pillows of my family members because I thought it would convince them that Demir. It's very embarrassing for me to talk about this now, but it's very true. I was very, very committed to it. And something happened in the 10 years uh, between me doing something like that when I was 13. And then me around 22, 23, when I realized that I no longer believed in this. And I don't want to put my views on someone else. You know, are you, your views are your views and your beliefs are your beliefs. And I don't want to tell you that they're right or wrong. For me, that belief, I decided was wrong. But I don't remember how I made that decision. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever had to do that? You've made a big decision in your life and you don't remember making it. And I think that's because you slowly get amazed by something else. And it's far more powerful than argument. So when I'm sat in front of this girl, I, I say to her, the only thing I can really think of, um, I, I say the same thing I say to everybody religious that asks me this question. I say, the person that came up with the Big Bang Theory was in fact a Catholic priest. And again, that shocks them. Right? That's the shock part. But then I, I want to say something else because I want to stop from being scared. So I ask, um, I say this to, to, to a lot of boys, I say, do you have any gold? Do any of you, have any of you got any gold on you at the moment? You don't carry a piece of gold jewelry. I don't want it. It's okay. I'm not going to take it from you. But if you're carrying a piece of gold on you, it did not come from the earth. I mean, yes, it was dug out of the earth, but that's not where it was made. Because we know from chemistry that you cannot make gold. In fact, it's what the Philosopher's Stone was all about. The idea of finding something to make gold with. It's not possible. And actually, some metals that we have on the earth come from the sun. And we also know that gold cannot be made in the sun because we know from nuclear physics that you cannot make gold in the sun. There is only one place in the universe that makes gold. It's when a star explodes. When a star explodes in a supernova, you can produce gold. And we know the only gold on the earth came from the supernova that created our sun and our solar system. And it's this tiny fragment of it that's left behind. That's amazing, right? And that's what I told her. Because I don't think it'd be right for me to tell her that she's right or wrong. I just think it's right for me to, to give her something else. If she wants, if she chooses to, to take on. And I think if I could give you a message, that would be it. It would be, don't argue, amaze. Because it's so much more powerful. But actually, when I showed you the, the speaky thing, it was something nice, something nice I discovered. But what I find most amazing about that is our inability to be amazed at times. Because what I just showed you is something that you do every day. In fact, all of you have done it at one point today. You've actually, you've actually conducted electricity across your body because it's how a phone works. It's how the screen in a phone like this works. You conduct electricity by touching it, and it takes it away and detects exactly what you've done. That is amazing. Why are we not amazed by it? Because we get used to it. And in fact, if we look around and we take amazement out of the incredible things that are around the universe, then I think that we can take a lot more from that. And we can find something that is, is actually worth changing our minds about. Thank you very much for listening.